so me and Danielle are the weight, and I'm still a little over, but we're thinking I'm on, and we're walking back, and, and uh, my pops had snuck up on us, and he runs up, and he kind of jumps on us, and pushes me a little bit, but like at that point, a little bit, it was like I was about to fall over, so I freaked out on him. I didn't know who it was too. And I ran up on him and I was like, I just grabbed I, I threw like a left hook to the body, but I didn't punch him. I just grabbed him and then I picked him up twice. I, I picked him up and set him on his feet and picked him up and set him on his feet. And then when I let him go, he like almost fell over and I had like the seat belt on him. And I was gonna punch him in the side of his face. But I was like, no, you can't, it's your dad. And then he turned into me and like his stuff fell out of his shirt pocket. He's old, he still wears shit in his shirt pocket. And then I need him in the, in the liver or the, I think it's just the liver. He says it was the sternum. It was so accurate. I just a little deep. Yeah. He pissed me off, bro. Don't touch me during wake up, bro. Nobody on the plane is allowed to touch me. We supposed to have security damn hotel who was talking shit the first day they were like oh well hey mike how you doing and i'm walking outside to go get bags and i'm like good and i just kept walking and then danielle's like ah how you doing this is the best weight cut question she, and she said to me that the security was telling her oh well, we're here for his protection uh tell him to calm down oh yeah that's fantastic you're lucky i didn't fucking hear you buddy uh Way to tell your security. Way to tell a UFC fighter you're here to protect him. But then my pops runs up on me. There was nobody to stop this motherfucker from jumping on me and then protect him from me. I'm in a savage mindset, and my pops just didn't seem to understand that. And I tried to get him to come back. Like, yo, come get these tickets. Come get these tickets, bro. Come get these tickets, man. And he wouldn't do it. He's crying about it. Cause I yelled at him. He's being a little pussy about it. And and now uh, I tried to talk to him after. You know he's giving me shit. So I'm, I'm, this is my point. It's like, man, did him coming around pissing me off help me? And I like when my girl said she said, no, nah, if anything, it uh, stopped you from getting booked. After the fight, we did get some big news Saturday. Our friend Daniel Cormier, after waiting around for a long time, after Stipe Miocic waiting around for a long time trying to get that rematch, and Brock Lesnar now being out of the equation, Daniel Cormier, of course. That's official, right? It, Brock Lesnar, it's I guess. Official. They said that yeah, he's we, a, retiring from MMA. Um, that was a, a statement or, or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're hearing that he's retired from MMA. I also heard that, uh, I don't know if this is true. I just read this on Twitter. I forget which journalist it was. Some I saw a tweet last night. Oh, Brock never got the deal he wanted, so he's retiring. Uh, but apparently if he, if he gets the right deal, he'd come back. But yeah, I don't he hasn't been valid. removed from the USADA testing pool just yet. So I guess that is the the official mark of retirement to sort of pull the curtain back a little bit. Is if you're not if you're not removing yourself from the USADA testing pool, that means you're probably trying to keep one foot in the pond just in case something comes up or, or whatever it is. Once you remove yourself from USADA, because what how long does it take once you remove yourself from the USADA testing pool to get back into it? So you have to be retested. How long is it before you can start fighting again? Six months. That's why when I retired, um, Hunter Campbell was like, "Man, we're going to keep you in the USADA testing pool." And I thought, "Oh yeah, okay, great." And then, and then I called him back. I said, "You know what? Don't take me out of the USADA testing pool. Not so I can run off and take a bunch of steroids. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do." I said, "Because I know me, and if I'm in shape and I'm training, and then somebody gets injured, I'll be like, I'll take a fight. I'll take it on short notice." And I, I put my body through enough damage, so I was like, "Listen." take me out of that you saw the testing pool because it protects me from myself uh, so if Brock is still in there that's interesting but the fact of the matter is the fight has been announced Steve Amiochi versus Daniel Cormier I spoke with DC a couple of weeks ago about this and he was like he didn't want to fight Steve A initially because he's like listen he went out there he beat Steve A he, he has nothing but good things to say about Steve A he says he's a great champion great guy all the rest of it is it 
But how do I top that? How do I beat that? He said, I knocked him out cold in the first round. You could, and he's right. You can't, you can't top that, you know? But, you know, DC won in that big payday. And, and you can't blame him. But that's gone. Officially, the UFC have, have announced it now. Um, DC versus Stipe, the rematch. You know, DC's a real fire. He's one of the be very, very best in the world. He was the champ champ. Uh, but the, it brings a lot of pressure. I mean, I understand DC's perspective. It definitely brings pressure. Stipe is a big man. He's a very good fighter. He hits hard. He can wrestle. And for a heavyweight, he has fantastic conditioning, good footwork. And we saw that uh, Stipe took Francis Ngannou's best shots, you know, and, and still stayed there. Not anybody, well, nobody's been able to do that so far other than Stipe. So, um... You know, it's, it's a tough fight for DC because of that. Not because it's a tough fight and not, not saying he can't beat him, but going into this, there's that pressure to try and replicate what he did the first time round. And will he be able to do that? Who knows? Will he be able to beat him again? Who knows? You know, you, you got to lean towards him, if I'm honest, after the way he beat him the first time. But it's a very, very tough fight. And as I say, DC is in the gym right now, no doubt pushing himself to the limit. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a big fan of Stipe, and we've had Stipe on the show as well. Um, he's a really, really cool dude, and um, it was interesting because am I did Stipe specifically sit out because he wanted the title shot back? Why was he out for so long? It's been over a year since we saw that fight. Did he was he sitting waiting for it? Because obviously he knew something that we didn't. If he just sat out for that long waiting. No, well, first off, I don't think it's over a year. I don't think it's even a year yet. I might be wrong, but. Uh, I think it was International Fight Week last year. Yeah, it was. It? You're right. You're right. Yeah. When's the next well, fight yeah, going to be? But I think it's International Fight Week, so it'll yeah. be a year roughly. Be. But um, yeah, I think Stipe's point all along was that being the dominant champion that he was, setting a record for the most title defenses, he deserved a rematch. You know, and yeah, you know, you kind of see his point a little bit. Other fighters in the past have got rematches. Yuana Young Jacek, she got a rematch, and you know. I could think of many more excuses, but Stipe felt that he wanted that fight. UFC wanted to move on. DC didn't want to do it. UFC were kind of interested in doing the Brock Lesnar fight. So it all made sense. But Stipe, you know, he, he stuck to his guns. He said, no, I want my fucking fight and I'm willing to sit out until I get it. So you got to respect that, if you will. Stipe, obviously, is still a, a serving fireman, you know, so he's busy enough. He's got no doubt, you know, he's got some money put away. So he's not desperate to fight. So he sat around waiting for it and it, it worked out. You know, it looks like he's fighting, well, he is fighting DC again and uh, it's going to be an interesting fight. Yeah, I mean, it should be a great fight. Um, yes, yeah, Stipe is just a, an animal. And the reality is like, look, John Jones knocked out Daniel Cormier. It's not like it's not like Daniel Cormier can't be knocked out. And if there's somebody that's going to be able to do it, big, massive, you know, heavyweight like Stipe Miocic, it could happen. It could really easily happen. To be honest with you, it's, it's any man's fight. Any given Sunday, either one of those guys can knock the other one out. Um, Dan Cormier is an absolute madman and a monster as well. Um, but I'm really excited to see it. I mean, I'm, I'm happy for Stipe because I do think he did. I think he had a point. I think there is a point there. It's like, you know, a lot of other people, he set some records there. He had the most title defenses ever as a heavyweight. He sort of brought some validity to that heavyweight division after a while of it being some guys that is, the titles kept on bouncing back and forth. Nobody really held on over for too long. It seemed like the heavyweight division was thin. And then Stipe Miocha came along and it was like, holy shit, this is a big athletic, real deal heavyweight. Um, and he got beat by somebody who is a big athletic real deal heavyweight. So it's like, you're talking about two of the absolute best, and I don't think there's many other guys in the heavyweight division, including Brock Lesnar, that are gonna compete with either of those guys. No, 100%. And I think also another reason why Stipe wanted that rematch so desperately is because he probably underestimated Daniel Cormier. You know, when you look at DC, obviously not the biggest heavyweight. He's a big guy and he actually came in heavier than Stipe for that fight. But still, you know, he's not the... When you look at DC, he's a big, solid, thick man, you know. But he's not... You don't look at him and see a gigantic man, okay? So you probably underestimated him there. DC also was not known as a one-punch knockout guy. So he thought, yeah, whatever, I'm not scared of his fist. And it was actually Stipe that was initiating the clinching sequences. So he thought, probably, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to bully this little man. I'm going to push him around. And, it looked, and he was doing okay. He was. He, you know, he initiated the sequences. He was walking DC down. And as I say, seemed to be giving him no respect. 
And then, as we all know, they clinch, and when they separate from the clinch, he threw that big overhand right, uh, connected, and knocked him out. So I think we're going to see Stipe coming in with a very, very different game plan this time. You know, might see him sticking and moving, keeping DC on the end of his jab. And then you, if you're fighting DC, you want to avoid the clinch at all fucking cost. It's as simple as that. That's what he does. He's an incredible wrestler, and as we've seen, he also has tremendous power. You know, it's it's weird. You see these guys going up a weight division, and you think they're gonna struggle but they don't they come in and they do really well because they haven't got to deplete themselves they're not going through those weight cuts they're not dieting so hard that they lose muscle and therefore they lose power they actually move up a weight class and they seem to have more power we see it time and time again so very very good fight congrats to dc and congrats to steve a on that one and uh, we'll talk about that nearer the time what else have we got what's going on steve a gets his rematch brock retired okay espn pay-per-view beef nah, let's not get into that Cormier planned to retire in March. Yeah, he did. But, you know, he hasn't. <laughs> there we go. I think he, he thought he, it was going to... When he when he said March, I think that's what happens is... And, and, and actually, you mentioned this before where you were like, Adesanya's not going to fight um, fucking uh, Romero. Where you're like, ah, oh, well, it's already set up. This guy's got his, his thing. With the UFC, really anything could happen. There's so many so many different things happen. People get popped for steroids. People get beat. They get injured. They, all these other things happen. So there's no real plans for like the future in MMA. Six To make a plan for six months from now in MMA, it's kind of difficult, right? So I think Cormier was like, cool. I'll hit Brock up. I'll defend my title one more time after that. I'll you know put a few million dollars in the bank, and then I'll just ride off into the sunset in March. And all of a sudden, the Brock Lesnar negotiations fell through. That did didn't happen he didn't have a big money fight to, to you know put it in its place and you're like well shit dude i'm still healthy i'm not going to just retire and not get those last few final paydays and i'm sure that's sort of where cormier's head is at yeah for sure i mean he, he said he always wanted to retire by 40 i mean he's only a few months after that and he did say he had some injuries as well so that kind of kept him out of the octagon uh, he had a quick turnaround against Derek brunson he got that there but listen if he comes back and he beats steeper i i think <clears throat> part of me I think for, 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 for DC, in terms of his legacy, fighting Stipe again is way better. You know, like a lot of people, they criticize me. They say, oh, yeah, you went after GSP for that big money fight, you know. Um, well, we're fighters and we fight for fucking money. Okay, so we want to be involved in the biggest fights possible. So I understand DC doing that just for the same reason I wanted to fight GSP. But I think for DC's legacy, if he was to come back, well, not, sorry, not come back, if he was to rematch Stipe and legitimately beat Stipe a second time, then there's no way you can argue that he is one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time, because a lot of people, they might say, oh, well, he kind of got lucky with Stipe, didn't he? He landed that punch. Can he do it a second time? Well, if he does do it a second time, there's no argument about it. If he beats him twice in a row, DC's the better man. Well, yeah, and I, that. And whilst it's a risky scenario, there is a, a lot to gain from that fight. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, maybe that's also going on in DC's mind because he has that win, and you're talking about legacy. It's like, well, I have that notch in my belt already. Why do I need to risk that notch now? I sort of have that. I have that feather in my cap. I can move on, get another couple big wins at heavyweight, and that's that. So, um, but when you look at the heavyweight landscape, there's nothing else there. I mean, who else is there for Stipe Miocic? Is there anybody else that I want to see fight for the heavyweight title? Francis Ngannou. Yeah. Junior Dos Santos. <sighs> Walt Harris. <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot of interesting people uh, at heavyweight. You know, there's a lot of people I'd like to see uh, DC face. A lot of people I'd like to see Stipe face. The other problem is that Stipe has fought and beat most of them. He beat Dos Santos. He beat Ngannou. And he beat some others as well. Uh, DC has only fought Stipe at heavyweight. You know, oh, well, sorry, pardon me, and Derek Lewis. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to see him face some of those people that I said. It'd be interesting to see him in there with Ngannou. But the real fight, uh, the rematch, Steve. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video. And tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.